Hi everyone, this is my next project. This is a Dixie campaigner desk from the 1970s, I believe. There's the Dixie stamp right there, but it's a little worn off. These originally came with a hutch that went on the top, but the one that she had was too damaged, so I only got the desk. I paid $20 for this. I just happened upon it whenever I was driving down the road, saw a garage sale sign. I looked this desk up online before I purchased it and saw that there were some places selling it for $700, $1,500. So $20 was an absolute steal, and I thought I could do something cool with this thing. It does have a little veneer damage right there, that I'm gonna have to wood fill. And on this side, there's also a chip right there. A fella that helped me load it up just kind of scooted it in the truck and sheared that off. I'm gonna start by putting some wood filler on these damaged areas. And while that's drying, I can start cleaning this piece up and getting it prepped and ready for paint. To quickly fill these damaged areas, I'm using Minwax Stainable Wood Filler. I'm going to apply it with this plastic scraper slash putty knife. There's a couple more areas here that could use a little touch up. Next, I gotta get these little plates off. I have this little flathead screwdriver that I've sanded down to have a really sharp edge, and that allows me to get in here. It's already kind of loose, but I go towards the nail, push in, and I get this little twist. I don't wanna lift it up too much because I wanna avoid gouging the wood as much as possible. It's gonna be painted anyways, and it's just veneer, but keeps me from having to do extra work later. So after popping this up, just work my way around. I'm gonna put these all in a plastic bag because I don't wanna lose these little nails. Alright, I got all the hardware off. The wood filler is still drying, so while that's finishing up, I'm going to go ahead and get this wiped down and sanded. Once this wood filler is dry enough over here for me to sand, I'll be done with all the sanding. I can clean it up and it'll be ready for some paint. While I was cleaning everything, I found a few spots where there's some damage that I need to repair. These veneer chips don't really look like much, but once you get paint down, this will kind of be like textured. I'm going to continue on and sand this piece with the same 220 grit sandpaper that I'm using on the wood filler down there. I'm using my Surf Prep 3x4 sander to do this job. Thank <laughs> you. 
I've got this foam pad that kind of keep from over sanding too much helps to make it a little quicker okay I got all the sanding done I just need to come back get all this dust cleaned up wipe it down again and then it'll be ready for some paint Okay, the prep is done. Everything looks nice and clean. Now it's time for the fun part. I'm gonna be spraying this bare marquee paint using my Graco Magnum X5 airless sprayer. This color is called Thai Teal. And this is what we're working with. Of course, it's gonna be a little darker once it dries. I've had some people comment on some of my older videos saying that I need to try out some of these FFLP spray tips for my Graco sprayer. These tips are supposed to give you a finer spray and use less paint, so I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. For my sprayer, I also had to get a new nozzle that would hold this tip. Anytime that I'm spraying something, I make sure to do some test sprays first. In this case, it's especially important because I'm trying out this new spray tip. Then I adjust the pressure on the sprayer to make sure I'm getting the right amount of paint coming out. This is the pressure control for this sprayer, which controls how fast and how much paint comes out of the sprayer. If you turn it up, more paint comes out. If you turn it down, less paint comes out. Usually I have it turned all the way up to this but with this tip I have it about right here so that already shows me that I'm going to be using less paint for this project. I'm going to stagger these drawers so that they're hanging over just a little bit so that when I spray like this the paint gets on the edge of the drawers. Okay, that's the first coat. It's a little humid today, so I'll probably have to let this dry for about an hour or so. I'll come back and see what the coverage looks like. But I'll probably only have to do like one more coat after this.
Okay, that's probably going to be the last coat. Only two coats. I got a nice thick coat on the second go around. Everything looks nice and smooth. So I'll let this dry for an hour or so. Come back, take a look at it. See what we got. It's been a few hours now and everything is nice and dry. Everything looks great. Full coverage. I'm happy with how all this has turned out. So I'm going to go ahead and get the sprayer cleaned out. Get it loaded up with some water-based polyurethane and we'll get the top coat applied. To top coat this, I'm going to be using this Verithane water-based polyurethane and this is going to be in a semi-gloss finish. Alright, I've got the polyurethane loaded up in my spray gun. I'm going to spray two or three light coats waiting about 15 or 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes in between each coat. Okay, that's the end of the first coat. Just a light nested coat. It's kind of hard to tell from the lighting, but it's just kind of splotchy. Oh, there we go. Now you can see it there. We'll just let this dry for about 30 minutes and repeat the process. All right, this is dried. Ready for another coat. This is my third and final coat. Instead of just misting the furniture, I'm holding the gun closer and moving my arm slower so that I get thicker coverage which creates a factory like finish. And there's the final coat. You can see how it has a white splotchy look to it. That's just the polyurethane. That'll all turn clear once this starts to dry. And I didn't do the top. I have something else planned for it. I don't need to waste the product on it. What I have planned next requires me to have a little bit of a sanded surface so it has something to stick to. So I'm going to use this 320 grit sanding sponge to take care of that. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm doing an epoxy pour on the top of this desk. I'm using Beast Bonds epoxy resin for this project. This is my first time doing this technique, so I don't really feel qualified to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. In the future, when I get more experience under my belt, I will be glad to show you the ins and outs of this process. But for now, just sit back and enjoy the show.
and panicking. I don't have any more of that metallic, so whatever. See what happens. Still need some more. What did I do wrong? I calculated something wrong here. At this point, 30 minutes or so had passed and I felt like the epoxy was starting to harden up on me. Then I remembered that using a heat gun over the epoxy will kind of reactivate it and allow it to move around more. I didn't want to get all the epoxy that was on my gloves on my brand new heat gun, so I removed my gloves, turned on the heat gun, then had to put the gloves on, and I was just in a panic. I'm panicking, I'm panicking, I'm panicking, I'm panicking. Oh my gosh. My hands are so sweaty. Why is it taking so long? Uh, okay. Okay. How about I here? Once the panic was over and I finally got everything figured out, I was ready to torch it, except for this gnat that just flew in it at the last minute. Torching the epoxy heats it up and allows any air bubbles to escape, which gives you a nice smooth finish. Okay, this is what I ended up with. Uh, it didn't go as planned, <laughs> but it looks all right. It'll probably move around a little bit more as it's curing. Uh, I don't know what I did wrong with my math. I thought I had the math figured out, uh, but I changed things along the way, and this is what I ended up with. Um, so we'll just let it be and see what happens. I'll check back in a few hours, and we'll go from there. One thing that I'm finding out is that it's really important for the surface to be level so that the epoxy stays in place. What was happening is everything was pulling up along the front here and the white in the back was getting stretched out. So to counteract that, I 
position the legs in a different spot on the can so that it's leaning back a little bit and it's stretching the epoxy that way. I'll probably have to come back and even it out though because I don't want it to see it's kind of stretching out a little bit too far right there. Uh, learn a little lesson. Learned a few lessons today on this, but I'll just keep an eye on this every 10 minutes or so and adjust it as needed. Pretty sure I'm supposed to torch it again too. I waited 48 hours to make sure that everything was fully cured. I needed to sand down these sharp edges that the tape dam created. Then I need to sand the top so that I can apply an epoxy top coat to protect the finish of my pour. This is what it looks like after I've got it sanded. I did 120, 150, 180, and then 220. I just gotta clean up all this dust, tape it off again, and then I can do my epoxy top coat. Once I got everything wiped down and taped off again, I used a tack cloth to get the remaining dust off before I did my final pour. top coat applied see how glossy it is um, just gotta wait for this to dry for a few hours hopefully it dries nice and smooth and my top will be finished once I got the hardware back on I felt like it was missing something on the legs so I used the same spray paint that I used on the hardware to accent the legs and tie all the gold in together All right, that looks a lot better. I'm a lot happier with this. I think I'm done with this project. Thank you very much for watching while I explored something new. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you comment down below and let me know. Give it a like, share it with your friends and family. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you do that right now so you get notifications whenever I put out new videos. If you'd like to see me do more of these epoxy pours, let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do about getting some more put out for you. Thank y'all again for watching this video and I'll see y'all again soon.